ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفر ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له وما يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله وبعد خير الحديث كتاب الله وخير الحد حد محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم والشر الأمور محتثاتها وكل محتثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار We would like to begin by praising Allah We praise him and we seek his help and we ask for his forgiveness we seek refuge with Allah from the evil of ourselves and from the evil consequence of our evil actions. Whomsoever Allah guides, there is none to misguide. And whomsoever Allah leaves to go astray, there is none to guide. And I testify that Allah alone is worthy of worship and that Muhammad is the servant of Allah and his final messenger. After that, of all the speech, the best is the book of Allah, the Quran. And the best way is the way of Prophet Muhammad. May God's peace and blessings be upon him. And the worst thing in the religion are those matters that have been newly introduced. And every newly introduced matter in the religion is an innovation. All of the innovations are misguidance. All misguidance is going astray. And all going astray is in the fire. Today we are going to talk about Islam. The meaning of the word Islam. Now, many people, and some scholars included, have stated that the word Islam linguistically comes from the Arabic root Salama, which means peace. The word Islam means submission. This is its linguistic meaning, submission. In the context of the religion, it means submission to the will of God. Now, of course, when we say the word submission, for most people, it has a type of negative connotation. It produces in our minds and in our hearts a type of negative idea. And that's because we are constantly indoctrinated with the idea of freedom, especially living in the West, the idea that we are a free society. One of the statements that is very common you hear people saying in the West is, this is a free country, this is a free society. And often we hear politicians in the West talking about how we are free nations and how we want to spread freedom like the freedom that we have across the world. Of course, in reality, the idea that we are free is really propaganda. What I would like us all to think about today is this concept of submission and freedom. And I would really like us to question how free we really are. Let's think about ourselves, let's think about our lives. All of us, we live in societies and in communities. All of us, human beings, have some concept, some idea of what we think is right and what we think is wrong, what we think is good, what we think is evil, what we think is appropriate behavior or inappropriate behavior, what we often call good manners and bad manners. So all of us have some idea and very often we find that in one country something may be considered to be good manners and in another country that self same thing may be considered to be bad manners. For example, in some countries if you have a nice meal and then you let out wind through your mouth, you burp as we call it, that's considered very disgusting and a revolting thing to do. But in other countries considered an act of appreciation that you've enjoyed the meal. It just gives you an example of how in two different cultures exactly the same thing can be considered to be in one culture good manners and another culture bad manners. But my point is this is that all of us have a viewpoint, a way through which and by which we look at the world around us and we understand and we make judgments 
about the people around us and about the world around us. No one is free from that. And in a very real sense, we are submitting to those ideas. Let's just think for a few minutes. Where do we get those ideas from? Who told us that this is right and this is wrong? That this is good and this is evil? Who told us that these are good manners and bad manners? Where did you get that information from? Think about it for a few minutes. Maybe some of you will be saying, our parents, that's where we got this knowledge from. Others will be saying, our teachers at school. Some will be saying, our friends. Some will be saying, our society, our religion, our government, the laws of our country. One of the strongest and the most powerful influences in the way that we think and the way that we look at the world is the media, especially the television, the films that we watch, the music that we listen to, the radio programs that we tune into. They have a very powerful effect in shaping the way that we look at the world. And in a very real sense, we are submitting to those ideas. We are submitting to those concepts. I'm sure many of us have been to school. And at school, I'm sure also many of us had to wear a school uniform. And I'm also pretty sure that a lot of us didn't really like wearing that school uniform. Well, if we live in free countries and it's a free society, why do you have to wear a uniform that you don't like? Why do you have to dress in clothes that you don't want to? What does it mean then? I live in a free society. What we realize is that we are not really free at all. All of us have to follow laws. And there are many laws that we find regulate our lives in so many different ways. And in a very real sense, we submit to those laws. What does submission mean? Think about the word submission. What does it mean? When you submit, what are you doing? You are giving in. You are surrendering. In other words, when you submit, you do something that maybe you don't necessarily want to do, but you do it because you are told to, or because you know that it's good for you, or that you know that if you do this other thing, it's bad for you. Often we submit to an authority that we believe and that we understand is more intelligent and more well-informed than us. That's why we go to a doctor. If the doctor says to us, well, you know, you've got this problem, and you're going to need an operation, and if you don't have an operation in the next, you know, two days, you'll die. Most of us don't think about studying the disease, finding out are there other cures, so on and so forth. We don't have the energy, we don't have the time, we don't have the knowledge foundations in order to, be, in order to do that. In other words, we trust the doctor, and we do what the doctor says, even though sometimes the operation may be threatening our life, but we'll take that advice from the doctor. In that sense, in that very real sense, we are submitting. So our life is in fact full of submission. We submit to many different things. We submit to many different people in our lives. The idea that we are free is really a type of propaganda. No human being is free. Everybody submits to someone or something. The question is, who do you submit to? What do you submit to? This is the real question. I'd like you to think about a scenario. It may seem these days a very strange scenario, but believe me, there was a time not very long ago when this scenario that I'd like you to imagine was very common. In fact, for most of human history, it was a norm that people would be sold into and subjected to slavery. Slavery in the sense where one human being was literally the owner of another human being. You could go to a marketplace in many different places in the world and you could buy a slave, like you could buy some clothes, like you could buy some food. You could go to the marketplace and you could buy a slave. Now I want you to imagine Try and imagine it, and try and visualize it. Try and imagine yourself there, 
at the slave market. But what I want you to really try and imagine is that you are one of the slaves. You are one of those people, those unfortunate people, that is going to be sold as a slave. Think about that. Imagine you're standing there in the marketplace. Maybe you're chained up. And people are looking at you. Someone out there is going to be thinking of buying you, of purchasing you. And then you will belong to that person. And that person will be able to do with you whatever they like. What sort of master would you like to have? What sort of master would you like to be a slave to? And then think about something else. I'm sure that deep in your heart you'll be hoping at this stage, you'll be praying that there's another type of master that you don't get. A cruel master, an unkind master, a hard master. Why don't we imagine something even worse than that? Imagine you're not bought by one master, but imagine you're bought by five or six. In other words, five or six people get together and they say, well, we can't afford a slave by ourselves, but if we each put in some money, then together we can buy a slave. So imagine now, you are one human being owned by five or six different people. Imagine that. How would your life be? How do you think your life is going to be? Master A, master number one will say to you, do this. Master B will say, do that. Master C will say, do that. Master D will say, do this. Master E will say that. Every single master is telling you to do a different thing. How is your life going to be? Your life will be terrible. Your life will be a very distressing life, a very uncomfortable life. Yet I think that I have already described the life of most of you right now. Think about it. Your parents want you to do this thing. Your friends want you to do something else. Your wife, your husband, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, they want you to do something different. Your culture and your tradition tells you you should do something else. And you yourself, you don't feel like doing any of those things. You feel like doing something altogether different. That's exactly the situation. We are a slave to many masters. Which one shall we please? Who shall we obey? Each one is calling us in a different direction. What a terrible, miserable, unhappy life most of you are leading. Let's go back to Islam. Let's really now understand what Islam is all about. Islam is about being a slave to one master, submitting only to one criterion, to one idea and one concept of what is right and wrong and good and evil, what we should do and what we shouldn't do, what is appropriate behavior and what is inappropriate behavior. One master, one guidance, one way. So who is better? The one who submits to one master, who is merciful and kind and forgiving and knows what is good for us and would only guide us to what is good for us. This is the example of the one who submits to Allah, the all-wise, all-knowing, all-hearing, all-seeing, merciful, compassionate creator of the heavens and the earth, who has revealed his guidance in the Qur'an, and who sent his messenger Muhammad, may God's peace and blessings be upon him, to be a living example of how to follow that guidance from God. And that is why the Prophet Muhammad said that he was happy, he was proud to be called a slave of Allah. Because believe me, all of us are slaves to someone or to something. It's just a question who you choose and what you choose to be a slave and a servant to. Therefore, Islam means submission to Allah to be a servant to Allah, to be the slave of Allah. And so if you were to ask me, Abdurrahim, what do you think is right and what do you think is wrong? What do you think is good and what do you think is evil? What do you think is the right way to behave and the wrong way to behave? What do you think are the good manners and the bad manners? I would tell you this knowledge has been revealed 
by Allah. I believe what is right is that which Allah, God, the Creator, the All-Wise and the All-Knowing and the Most Merciful, He has said and He has taught and He has revealed that which is right. And what do I think is wrong? It's what God has said is wrong. And what's the right way to behave and the wrong way to behave? That is the criterion that has been revealed by God. And my life is a life that is peaceful, a life that is tranquil, a life that has clear direction. I'm not confused about who I have to please. I'm not confused about who I have to obey. I'm not confused about what I need to do in my life and what guidance I need to follow. Because for me as a Muslim, for me as someone, and the word Muslim means someone who follows Islam, makes Islam. A Muslim is someone who follows Islam. So Islam means submission to God. So a Muslim is someone who submits themselves to the will of God. That's what it means to be a Muslim. To follow God's guidance and to believe that God's guidance is the best guidance. And to believe that the guidance from the Creator is the one that will truly give us the real success in life. Yes, all of us are looking to be successful. All of us are looking to be happy. But the true happiness comes from living our life in a way that is pleasing to our Creator. Because God knows, our Creator knows, Allah knows what is best for us. Even if sometimes our desires don't accept it or don't like it, the wise person realizes and understands that the guidance, the perfect guidance and revelation from Allah is what is going to bring us peace, true peace and true tranquility into our life. So this is the concept of what Islam means. To go back to my beginning, to go back to the points that I was making in the beginning, just to remind ourselves that all of us are following some laws, all of us are following some rules, all of us have some limitations that dictate the way that we behave. It's really up to you to choose where you take that guidance from. Muslims believe that the best guidance is Allah's guidance. The best way is God's way. And how do we know? From where do we get the information from? That what is it that God wants from us? What is it that Allah wants from us? How do we know? And where do we get this information? as to what is right and to what is wrong and to what is good and what is evil. From where do we get this knowledge and this information? We know that from the Qur'an. The Qur'an is, or the Qur'an is the words of Allah. The Qur'an are the actual uncreated words of God that were revealed to Prophet Muhammad 1,400 years ago, over a period of 23 years, and that was collected together in one book, soon after the death of Prophet Muhammad. This is the Qur'an that we have with us today. But the Qur'an is not the only guidance, because Allah in His mercy also gave the Prophet Muhammad the task to live the Qur'an. So the Qur'an is the words of Allah, but the Prophet Muhammad, he was a type of living example of how to follow that guidance from Allah, how to follow that revelation from the Creator of the heavens and the earth. And that's why his sunnah or his way is so important. Because the way of the Prophet really teaches us how to be a perfect or as perfect as we can be in this life to be a perfect human being. Because the perfect human being is the one who submits themselves, who obeys God completely and utterly. And the more we obey God in every aspect of our life, the more happy, the more peaceful, the more content we will be. So the closest that we could ever get to Allah and the closest we can ever get to our Creator is that we only look at the things that God loves and we only listen to the things that God loves. And we only do the things that our Creator loves and wants. And when we do that, we are truly 
worshipping Allah. We are truly servants of Allah. We are good, obedient servants of the Creator of the heavens and the earth. And so this is our objective. This is what we seek to achieve. And one of the very beautiful things about this religion of Islam is how complete it is. Islam has guidance for us in every single aspect of our life. Not only about how to pray to God, not only about the acts of worship that we can do, like giving charity or performing pilgrimage, which we'll talk about those things in other programs, but also Islam teaches us how we should treat others, even how we should walk, how we should talk, how we should dress, how we enter into our house, how we behave with our family. Islam teaches us the etiquettes, the manners, what are the good manners, what are the bad manners, even down to is it polite or not to burp when you finished eating your food, by the way, it's not polite according to what Islam teaches. The Prophet Muhammad told us you should only fill your stomach one third with food, one third with water, and you should leave one third for air. So you shouldn't fill yourself so much that you have to force the air out, that's not good manners. So this is something that Islam is so complete. It teaches us all of these things so that we can live our life completely in a way that God loves and God is pleased with, in complete submission to our Creator. And this, as I have said, is the way to peace, to true peace, to true tranquility, to real happiness. And so therefore, it is true to say that Islam means peace. Islam means peace through submission to the will of Allah by obeying our Creator, by being His obedient servants, by being His obedient slaves, we will acquire the true peace, which is not absence of war. Some people think that peace means there's no war. No. The true peace, the real peace, is the peace that is inside our own souls, our own hearts, our own minds. The peace and the tranquility that comes from surrendering and submitting ourselves to the will of our Creator, Allah. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa la alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.